Hello and welcome. I'm Tyler Edlin and welcome back to another episode of Brush Sauce Theater. This week I'd like to take a step back and just answer some viewer submitted questions. Alright, so Stefan and I were talking in the comments in the last video and he wanted to know some specifics in regards to my workflow and how I set things up and it maybe he feels that this could be beneficial to any more, more of you out there that are more on the beginner end so yeah what, why not let's let's run through some of these and answer which windows you know and, and what information and settings do you prefer in Photoshop and what shortcuts alright um, I go up here on uh, in Photoshop and I believe it's under window workspace and I choose painting and that's my layout. Of course I have my tool presets I choose to just put over here because as I switch tools I can get my different drop down menus based off of what I use a lot of. So mostly in the brush and some of the smudgers and the erasers to just kind of instantly pick it up there. I also like to hit this button a lot as well so I could see what brush I'm currently using and if I need to use it um, it will it'll let me know which one it is since I do kind of have a lot right now. Which shortcuts? Um, I have a few mapped to my tablet. Let's let's look at those now. So for the tablet I use, I'm using an old Wacom Intuos 3. It, this old beater. <laughs> I, have, I think it's the large version and I have these hotkeys set up like this. It wouldn't let me load the drivers. It was some kind of error. So I'm gonna have to um, restart my computer to access that so I'm not doing that now but I can tell you I use these few buttons and basically almost those few only I have uh, I have them just set up to do these following functions uh, one of them is step backwards step backwards so I just have to tap my button and I can go step back in, in any image um, that I'm making so see I can make a bunch of my kids hit a button and it instantly goes back uh, the next one I have is alt so when I'm, I'm drawing, I just have to tap my thumb, and I can use my eyedropper to quickly adjust my colors or, or pick them uh, based off what's around them. I, use that, I abuse that religiously. The next one I have, ball, and then I have one set to space bar. So if I am really zoomed in, which I rarely, rarely am, then I can at least move things around without kind of disorienting myself. And then I really use ones like, yeah, like, that's all I use. I'm not a shortcut guy. I just, I, if I want to use my brush, I go over here, pick the brush. People hit, what, they hit B to get to the brush? Yeah, some people, you can hit B key, you can hit uh, you know, G for gradients. I just usually just go over here and hit it manually. I don't use a lot of shortcuts, honestly. Which brushes and which settings are are essential and are always kind of needed, I guess? That depends what brushes you're using. I switch my brushes up every month or so. I just go find someone advertise, hey, I got my brushes. I go and I download them, toss most of the old ones, and just use the new ones. And I, it keeps my work a little fresh, I feel. Always just trying new ones. But if I had to limit or pick a few brushes that I always use, I would basically kind of, and you don't need these exact brushes. Keep, keep that in mind. So for brushes, I think of just a few basic ones is really anyone needs to get going. Uh, there's a, cor a few different categories. There's, of course, brushes that are shapes, hard-edged, and they're purely designed just to chisel. Sometimes I right-click on my thing so I can switch the orientation of them manually like that. So it's pretty fun if I'm drawing something and I just need to change value and then kind of sculpt up that shape. It really kind of... I use these brushes when I'm designing things, like uh, these characters up here when I'm designing. That would be the, the context that I use that for. I also, I and mean, there's a variety of these. You can have ones that are shaped like long and thin, some that are triangle based, and more that are uh, elliptical based, and that have different settings where you can alter based off your pen tilt. You know, all those settings are up here. Secondly, I like to use airbrushes, and I use a few variety of the airbrushes as well. I, I like some that are, are super smooth and soft, like this. And then I use some that have some texture to it. Uh, for example, this one kind of has a little metallic feeling. I don't know, it's a little weird, but it it's cool. Sometimes, depending on the surface, I like to use it. 
just to get a little bit of that that texture and then sometimes I go and I smudge that and kind of smooth it out gives you a nice balance the other thing I really like to do with this stuff is I switch the the brush mode so if it is something metallic or something I can put that like for instance on linear dodge I can go over to my airbrush and then I can really start getting a mean highlight or maybe if I need to darken something I can just dump it on a uh, overlay and and begin to kind of add that in kind of over it or if I need to you know imbue a little bit of color to that like if I wanted to tone this green overlay is another good reason for that but it, again it it can be a little challenging to use if you you have to experiment a lot and just basically put a lot of hours you know into the craft to kind of work those sort of things I feel just to so you can feel it out Let's then blow the highlight back out and get a, a cool kind of nice little range but that's the other thing you know there's airbrushes I, I have you know, textured airbrush. This one's a bit uh, stringy. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. It, it varies it up. I have one that, that's also similar. I believe I got recently in the Jeremy Fenske's pack. Which is kind of like this. I've been having fun with this guy. You can do rocks. You can do skin with it. You can do all kinds of things. But that kind of transitions to the last brush, the, the, or the, the other type of brushes you can do. You can do brushes with, with texture, and having just a few of them that give you a variety of texture, I feel also can be really fun to kind of experiment and play around with. But they're not necessary, and how you use them will be different you know, from how the next guy uses them. Like one of them makes a really nice tree bark. Sometimes when I'm painting a texture or something like this, sometimes I just like to take it, uh, I hit uh, copy and paste, and then I can, you know, move that texture around and, and use it basically elsewhere, you know, in the painting, another common you know, technique I like to do. So you can fake some perspective, add a hill and some slopes to it too, skew it and then, woo, warp it. I think I hit the wrong thing there. <laughs> But yeah, that, that 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 are things you can that I do. So every brush has their own setting, and if you don't, if I don't like how one particular brush is behaving, but I kind of like what it's doing, I just go and you know turn the settings on. So maybe I want to shut the transfer off so I can paint with a solid color. Um, maybe I want to add you know, uh, color dynamics to it so I can start basically painting with some colors. I mean that works too. So see now there's there's color information as subtle as it is in, in this brush stroke. Some br brushes work great like that. The last thing I do is I do like to put kind of colors you know, near each other, let's say in this case, so something like that, and then a bright one, maybe having a little transition in there as well, just to, to, to spice it up, and maybe we'll put a little accent green in there as well. Ooh, that's a strong green. <laughs> let's, let's get the transfer on and go a little bit lighter with the green there, something like that. And then what I like to do is just grab the, the, this this finger tool here and I have a variety of, of smudge brushes that I do like. So if I need a, a, a soft edge with this transition there, I can use the this tool to kind of push the paint around you know, in a variety of ways. They all kind of, see they do it a little bit differently affecting the, uh, the surface on things. And I use these a lot actually. So whether you need a hard edge or a soft transition, these brushes are can do it. Uh, these brushes can do it. And then I go back and if I want to paint some more color over it, get some more of that in there, then I can do that. I don't know what this is. It's it's Tyler Allen's Guide to Abstract Painting. I don't know. I'm not an abstract guy. Now, I usually don't cover a lot of stuff like this, or I haven't up to this point, because there's a great site called Control-Alt-Paint uh, by Matt Core here, and he's got a free video library and dozens of basic set up your workspace type of things like that. And this is pure, like, why would I want to bother going through all the steps when some guy already has it done really, really well? So I'd go here, check out Control Alt Paint um, for that sort of stuff. I mean, remember, it's not uh, the tool you use, it's how you kind of use it. You could give uh, 25 different artists all the same brush and they're all going to use it differently. So it kind of comes down to experience, knowing your fundamentals, and applying techniques and how you do that. Now in regards to workflow, which I believe was another question, I use all kinds of workflows. Uh, 
like this week, for example, I'm doing a series of character designs. Again, these are incomplete, and I drew them all. At the same time, and that was for, no, that's for client work. Um, they're going to end up kind of something like this. But for myself, I was doing some sketches, and they're like this, where I'm sculpting with shape. So you can approach things different ways. I like to, for more difficult things, I like to sculpt with form and light rather than kind of draw and and work it out kind of linearly. I, I tried that at first. Want to see? I, I failed. I came up with a few sketches and did this, and I was like, I'm out. You know, I tapped out, and I got rid of them, and now I'm just going to draw <laughs> these characters like this. So being flexible in that regards, when I'm working out designs, I like to reduce it to as few components as possible, mainly just a few shades of, you know, gray, white, and um, a mid, uh, you know, black, a mid tone. I like to use few components to work out my design so I can focus on shapes and patterns and the arrangement of them. Uh, sometimes, if I'm based off an idea like this and I'm working on a vast landscape, I kind of just sculpt it out with the base color and then I just photo mash it in. I, I, I threw in this one, threw in something over there, and then I threw in all of this. And then I just start painting over it and adding in, and reducing details till I'm kind of at here with it, which is a little bit of a rough mid stage. I've completely removed any photo at this point. Um, but yeah, it, it sometimes I just like to paint on top of something. It's better than painting on white sometimes for me. Other times, I like to use 3D a lot. Even something like this again, where I started off like this. When it comes to 3D, I like using SketchUp, uh, Cinema 4D, uh, for my lighting and my rendering right now, and Daz Studio, which is also free with SketchUp. They're both free. I like to use those for my characters so I can arrange them. And again, just... Um, basically paint and draw over them so I can get it helps me visualize the space I guess and and that that can vary too whatever whatever subject matter I'm on if it's if it's complex which I don't have to show here but I always like to start which I cover so many times in my videos I start with a little sketch called the thumbnail and that's usually pretty small like this and that's to get the general feel and the tone and the composition of your image and I like to do that and I keep it as small because your image has to read. You have to be able to instantly look at that and know what's happening. We have a bar scene with two characters conversing. So no matter how much size it is or how much you know, I, I blow it up and put detail into it, it's going to read. And it's going to read quickly because that's my job. I have to sell the idea as quickly as possible. And so here's a kind of like another mid-stage workup. It's not done. But I'm kind of working through it and working on simplifying and grouping my values. So when I kind of build it all together, it will kind of work and it will flow uh, nicely. So that's kind of how I work. And basically, I work on an image, no matter what it is, evenly. I like to bring it up evenly. I jump from the background to the foreground to the midground, and I work on it evenly. That way, when I do call it quits, it... it it's consistent. I don't have one area that looks super crisp and detailed and another area that looks like an unpolished mess. So I do like to work on things a bit evenly. Um, but that would that would be about it, I think, for a lot of my my core I, uh, ideas or workflows. I mean, that's this is, of course, a very simplified and direct version of that. But yeah, let me know if you find this helpful. And if any of you guys have any other kind of specific questions like this, I can cover next week. Or, or, or in the future anyway. Next week I should be doing the critique with Adam Duff on the, the next challenge. And then we'll be back in the rotation. But alright guys, thank you for watching and subscribing if you enjoyed this. And uh, take care. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please leave me a like. If you want to help me out, please share it with your friends. I'm also on Facebook where I have a subscribe button where you can get newsletters and discount info. I'm also on Twitter where I update and post images almost regularly. If you want a chance to mingle and meet other like-minded uh, individuals such as yourself, join the Brush Sauce community. Free and open to anyone, of course, through the Google+. Plus. And finally, if you'd like to inquire about my mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab, scroll through, read over some of the guidelines, and feel free to check out uh, several of my testimonial videos on my YouTube channel itself.